I'll be in in five minutes. Sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. That was the producer telling me I have to get back into uh, the little booth here and finish my uh, recording of my audiobook, Sales Leadership. But I really wanted to take a break because I got this email that I thought was so interesting that I wanted to share it with you because it really illustrates how important it is to honor your individuality and never let anyone sabotage you, your dreams, your goals, and rob you of your individuality. So let me read this uh, pretty interesting email to you here. Let's see. Oh, here we go. Um, Keith, I don't remember how long. Oh, let me preface it by saying uh, this is a longtime uh, subscriber and uh, fan of all my work. So uh, I really appreciate him taking the time to write this email because I welcome good feedback as well as feedback that can make me a better coach, leader, and deliver more value to you. So anyway, here's the email. Keith, I don't remember how long I've been following you, but we're talking years now. I have always found your newsletter to be thoughtful and insightful and a good investment of my time. However, since you have started posting videos, I am reconsidering my position. Hmm. Week after week, I ask myself, why is Keith shouting at me? Does he think that if he raises his voice, it will make the message more compelling? Does he lack faith in his content? Does he think I doubt his commitment or enthusiasm? What has changed, Keith? No small amount of power of video lies in intimacy. A one-to-one -one conversation shouting from the stage doesn't work. In my humble opinion, your message would be much more engaging and compelling if you stood close to me and shared what was on your mind. Well, thank you so much for this email. Of course, I'm, I'm going to leave the person's name anonymous. And as I read this, I started thinking to myself, wow, maybe I do need to change. Maybe I do need to change my approach. Maybe I do need to calm down and be like some of the other authors and thought leaders out there that have a, a softer, more monotone disposition. And maybe I shouldn't be so animated or corny. Maybe I should put my suit back on and wear a tie. And I'll never forget the two times I allowed the good opinion of others to influence who I was. And I'd like to share that with you and why this email was so important to me and the message and lesson I'd like to share with you. You see, I remember on two separate occasions throughout my career working with two global organizations and they wanted me to start off doing a keynote for them before we rolled out a longer initiative for coaching and and sales leadership. So it started off well. We had a great relationship. And as soon as the contract was signed and they were looking at my content, they started asking those questions, but not the questions of, hey, Keith, can you share with me what you're going to cover that is going to be really valuable for our audience and our managers? It was more about, okay, Keith, we have your content, but can you change this message a little bit and can you tweak this story a little bit and can you change the meaning behind this message that you wanted to deliver? Oh, by the way, can you change the order of things and that story at the end? Yeah, we don't really want you to use it. Could you use another story that would be more uh, aligned with maybe your experiences with our company? And the more we spoke, and the more suggestions they made, the more I lost myself. They stripped me away of my individuality. Now keep in mind, that was my choice. 
and I thought that this would serve them. But after two failed keynotes, I realized I surrendered my authenticity. I compromised my integrity of who I was, my passion, my purpose, and what I stood for. And that led to failure. But not failure in the sense in a bad way, failure in a sense that I get to share this lesson with you and it was an important lesson for me that I clearly needed to learn twice in 30 years of my career, but one that I will never forget. And over my time being a coach and, and leader and, and trainer, there are more times where I have denied and walked away from engagements exactly for their point. And it could be anything from, oh, Keith, listen, um, we'd love to hire you uh, uh, as a keynote for our, our sales kickoff. Uh, we'd love for you to tackle a few, a few things. We'd love for you to share your coaching framework. Uh, we'd love for you to discuss and give them also the model for uh, enrollment and, and the importance of creating alignment and buy-in, especially around change. We also want you to talk about um, how to tap into individuality and motivation. Uh, oh, by the way, also, it's a really important topic to how to hold people accountable and, oh, um, discuss what the proper way is to do a forecast, pipeline, and performance review. Um, oh, finally, you have 45 minutes to deliver. Those are the type of engagements that set you up for failure. And I will walk away from those because I refuse to not only challenge my integrity, but I don't want to disserve the clients. I'd be, I'd be doing them a disservice. So just to bring this home, if anyone asks you to change who you are, do not surrender your power. Because if you do, you will start acting on other people's good intentions. And that's what will start showing up in your life. So, just want to share with you a story that really touched me and something that I just experienced again and pass that knowledge on to you. I really hope it's something that you can walk away with, especially at your job, at home, in your community. The value you give is who you are, not what you do. And that's why I will never change who I am for anyone, for any client. Hey, I know there are people in the world that clearly may not like me or like me anymore. And while I'll always be open to someone's opinion, I will never, ever change at the cost of my true identity, purpose, and meaning. So here's Keith Rosen saying to you, be who you are, and I wish you extreme success.